What Nostradamus predicts for Donald Trump just begun and everyone is scared. As the race to the White House heats up, Americans are eagerly watching every candidate debate, anticipating the November election results. Suddenly, the predictions of the so-called Nostradamus of U.S. presidential elections have captured everyone's interest. What could it mean for America if Donald Trump becomes the next president again? Many are turning to Nostradamus's legacy to understand what Trump's potential return to power might mean for the country and the world. The modern prophet in question is Alan Lichtman, often referred to as the Nostradamus of U.S. presidential elections. He has built a reputation for his remarkable ability to predict election outcomes, having accurately forecasted nine out of the last 10 U.S. presidential elections. Mr. Lichtman's methodology has been both praised and scrutinized. To predict who will occupy the Oval Office, he developed the 13 Keys to the White House, an innovative system that revolutionized election forecasting. The keys consist of true or false questions assessing factors like economic performance, social stability, and the incumbent's charisma. By analyzing historical data dating back to Abraham Lincoln's era, Mr. Lichtman has created a predictive model that surpasses traditional election forecasting methods. Lichtman's 13 Keys to the White House model has been accurate since 1984, correctly predicting 10 consecutive elections. The model works by determining if six or more of the 13 keys are against the incumbent party. If so, they are predicted to lose. If fewer than six, they are predicted to win. Currently, Joe Biden is down by just two keys, which indicates a favorable position for his re-election. However, his performance in the first debate against Donald Trump on June 27th was widely considered a disaster. Biden stumbled over his words, seemed unfocused, and spoke with a weak, hoarse voice, leading to mixed and unclear statements. In contrast, Trump dominated the debate with a series of strong attacks. Biden's shaky performance has alarmed many Democrats and raised concerns about his ability to serve another term. Following the debate, several Democratic voters expressed deep concerns about Biden's re-election prospects, with some lawmakers even calling for him to withdraw from the race to protect the party's interests. Could this be the first sign that Trump has a better chance? According to Lichtman, Trump holds more of the critical keys. So, it's time to set aside polls, pundits, and concerns about Biden's age. The Democrats' best chance is with Biden running for re-election. One of Lichtman's keys is incumbency, which Biden obviously holds. Another key is party contest, and Biden hasn't been contested, securing two keys in his favor. This means that to predict his defeat, six out of the remaining 11 keys would need to fall against him. In 2016, this modern-day prophet accurately predicted Donald Trump's victory going against the polls. Similarly, in 1988, George Bush was trailing Mike Dukakis by 17 points in May and June, but managed to win with a 25-point swing. This is why our Nostradamus advises us to ignore the polls and pundits, focusing instead on the bigger picture revealed by his keys. Lichtman's predictive skills faced a significant test during the tumultuous 2000 election between Al Gore and George W. Bush. Although he predicted a win for Gore, the controversial outcome cast a shadow over his prediction. However, every election can change with events. For example, Biden's weak performance in the debate with Trump has made some voters rethink their choice. But this doesn't determine the final result. Even former President Obama faced uncertainty during his debates, but went on to win two terms. The true outcome remains unknown until the votes are counted. According to Lichtman, there are specific standards for comparing and predicting who will be the next president of the United States. We'll share these keys below. Compare these factors, make your predictions, and let us know in the comments who you support.
Initially, Mr. Lichtman's methodology was met with skepticism, but it has proven reliable time and again. From Ronald Reagan's re-election during an economic recession to Bill Clinton's victory over George H.W. Bush, Lichtman has accurately predicted critical U.S. elections. In 2020, we witnessed a fascinating election where a certain professor accurately predicted that Trump would lose and Biden would win. Back in 2019, Trump was only down by four keys. Remember, it takes six keys to lose the White House. This professor, who had correctly forecasted Trump's victory in 2016, received a note from Trump himself on the Washington Post article that predicted his win. The note said, Congrats, Professor. Good call. According to this expert, governance, not campaigning, is what truly matters. Trump failed to grasp this. When the pandemic struck, instead of addressing it substantively as the keys would suggest, he attempted to talk his way out of the situation, which didn't work. The economy suffered, and he lost two more keys, the short and long-term economic indicators, bringing him to six keys, enough to predict his defeat. Now, turning to the 2024 election, the predicted scenarios for the United States are drawing unprecedented attention. Nostradamus' prophecies for 2024 are also sparking concern. His first prediction for this year is astonishing. Prince Harry becoming king. One passage from his writings mentions a king of the Isles being driven out by force, which some interpret as referring to King Charles III. Another passage states, Soon afterwards, a disastrous war, a new king shall be anointed who for a long time will appease the earth. British author and Nostradamus commentator Mario Reading, who had previously suggested that Nostradamus predicted Queen Elizabeth II's death, speculates that King Charles III might abdicate due to ongoing attacks on him and his second wife. In this scenario, Harry, not William, would take the throne as the spare heir without the traditional markings of a king. The second prediction involves China engaging in warfare. Nostradamus foresaw combat and naval battles, mentioning a red adversary becoming pale with fear and causing dread in the great ocean. Many believe the red adversary symbolizes China and its red flag, and the naval battle could relate to China's tensions with Taiwan. Notably, Beijing commands the largest navy in the world. Nostradamus's third prediction for this year concerns climate disasters. The climate crisis has become increasingly evident with more frequent droughts, wildfires, and record high temperatures. Nostradamus predicts an escalation in these events. The dry earth will grow more parched and there will be great floods when it is seen, he wrote. He also foretold extreme weather events and global hunger. Very great famine through pestiferous wave, he noted. A new pope is the fourth prediction. According to Nostradamus, Pope Francis might soon be replaced. He wrote, Through the death of a very old pontiff, a Roman of good age will be elected. Of him, it will be said that he weakens his see, but long will he sit and in biting activity. Pope Francis, nearing his 87th birthday, has been experiencing health issues, which adds weight to this prediction. Lastly, some of Nostradamus' past predictions have come true. Writing 450 years ago, he seemed to have foretold the end of an era with remarkable specificity. The year 1999, seven months, from the sky shall come a great king of terror shall be revived the great king of Anglemoa before and after Mars shall reign. Interpreters suggested the king of terror referred to the Antichrist. Some argued that Angl is a near anagram of Mongol, the 16th century French term for Mongolians, implying an imminent invasion of Europe from the east. Whether by Russians, Chinese, or modern day descendants of Genghis Khan was unclear Nostradamus expert Professor Alexander Tolman found this prediction so alarming that he retreated to his bunker in Lower Austria to wait out the catastrophe that ultimately never occurred. 
Nostradamus' writings are now being used to forecast a European apocalypse. The basis of this prediction is the following quotation. Seven months the Great War, people dead of evildoing, Ruinevu shall not fall to the king. Some have interpreted this to mean that the escalation of the Ukraine conflict to a third world war is imminent. Between about 1547 and 1555, he reportedly dictated 942 poetic prophetic quatrains to his secretary while high on nutmeg, which causes hallucinations when taken in large doses. But Nostradamus posthumously triumphed over his detractors. His quatrains, published in 1555 as Les Prophéties, have never gone out of print and have been claimed to have predicted the execution of Charles the Thurster, the Great Fire of London, the French Revolution, the assassination of John Kennedy and Benazir Bhutto, the 2015 mass murders in Paris, even the abdication of King Charles III. A book of interpretations of his supposed prophecies last month topped the Sunday Times bestsellers list after apparently predicting when Queen Elizabeth II would die. In his book published in 2006, author Mario Redding claimed to have found something that others who had pored over Nostradamus had missed, that his quatrains are number indexed to correlate with dates. Hence, for instance, quatrain 1022 purporting to forecast the death of the queen reads, because they disapproved of his divorce, a man who later they considered unworthy. The people will force out the king of the islands. A man will replace who never expected to be king. This quatrain will come as no surprise to the British people, and it has wide implications. The first is that Queen Elizabeth will die circa 2022 at the age of around 96. He went on to claim the 1022 quatrain predicts that King Charles will abdicate because he is weary of the persistent attacks on both himself and his second wife because of resentments held against him by a certain proportion of the British population following his divorce from Diana, Princess of Wales. His interpretation didn't end there. He also reckoned that Prince Harry would become the next king instead of his older brother, William. Nostradamus's writings are now being cited to predict a European apocalypse. This prediction is based on the following quotation. Seven months the Great War, people dead of evil doing, Ruinevu shall not fall to the king. Some interpret this as a sign that the Ukraine conflict could escalate into a third world war. Between approximately 1547 and 1555, Nostradamus reportedly dictated 942 poetic prophetic quatrains to his secretary while under the influence of nutmeg, a spice known to cause hallucinations in large doses. Despite initial skepticism, Nostradamus's reputation has endured. His quatrains, published in 1555 as Les Prophéties, have never gone out of print and are believed to have predicted numerous historical events including the execution of Charles I, the Great Fire of London, the French Revolution, the assassinations of John Kennedy and Benazir Bhutto, the 2015 Paris attacks, and even the abdication of King Charles III. A book interpreting his prophecies recently topped the Sunday Times bestsellers list, apparently predicting the timing of Queen Elizabeth II's death. In his 2006 book, Author Mario Redding claimed to have discovered a unique insight. Nostradamus's quatrains are numbered to correlate with specific dates. For example, quatrain 1022, which is believed to predict the death of the queen, states, because they disapproved of his divorce, a man who later they considered unworthy, the people will force out the king of the islands. A man will replace who never expected to be king. These interpretations of Nostradamus's quatrains have captivated the public imagination, continuing to spark debate and intrigue over the centuries-old prophecies. Was Nostradamus really a seer capable of predicting the future? Or did he just get lucky with a few wild guesses? While we wait to see if future prophecies come true, 
You can decide for yourself after reading these surprisingly accurate predictions by Nostradamus. The Rise and Conquest of Napoleon Napoleon Bonaparte is a figure known to everyone. After the French Revolution, he rose to power in France and aimed to build an empire. His forces swept across Europe, even bringing down the thousand-year-old Holy Roman Empire. However, his story didn't end in triumph. He was exiled twice and died in near isolation. Despite this, his rise and conquests significantly altered the course of history. While Napoleon's ascent was unexpected to many, it seems Nostradamus had foreseen it. Pone luron more fire than blood, swimming in praise, the great man hurries to the confluence. He will refuse entry to the magpies, Pomoni and Durance will confine them. With some interpretation, it's noted that Pone and Lauren refer to cities in France, the latter being Olon. The Ascension of Hitler and the Nazi Party Few figures are more infamous than Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Nazi Party and a perpetrator of some of history's worst crimes. His rise and the domination of Western Europe were meticulously recorded. But could they have been predicted years before his birth? Nostradamus's predictions appear to suggest so. The first prediction. From the depths of the west of Europe, a young child will be born of poor people. He who by his tongue will seduce a great troop. His fame will increase towards the realm of the east. Hitler, born to poor parents in 1889 in Western Europe, was known for his persuasive speech, which helped him gain immense power and establish the Third Reich. Additionally, Germany, part of the Axis powers, allied with Japan, a realm of the East. Another prediction, beasts ferocious with hunger will cross the rivers. The greater part of the battlefield will be against Hyster. Into a cage of iron will the Great One be drawn when the child of Germany observes nothing. While Hister is often mistaken for Hitler, it actually refers to the Latin name for the Danube River, which flows through many regions involved in W. Du Tuan. The Assassination of President John F. Kennedy One of the most notorious moments in American history is the assassination of President John F. Kennedy on November 22, 1963. As JFK and his wife rode through Dallas, Texas, he was fatally shot. Lee Harvey Oswald was named the assassin, but numerous conspiracy theories suggest otherwise, some referencing Nostradamus's prediction. The ancient task will be completed. From on high, evil will fall on the great man. A dead innocent will be accused of the deed. The guilty one will remain in the midst. Some interpret this to mean Oswald was the dead innocent as he was killed before his trial, and the true culprit escaped justice. Oswald himself claimed he was a patsy, and the controversy surrounding Kennedy's assassination persists. The death of King Henry II. King Henry II, a fervent Roman Catholic known for his brutal persecution of Protestants, met a gruesome end during a joust with Gabriel de Lorges, Count of Montgomery. After being knocked down in the first round, Henry insisted on continuing. In the second round, de Lorges' lance splintered, piercing Henry's eye and brain. Henry suffered for 10 days before dying. Nostradamus wrote, the young lion will overcome the older one on the field of combat in a single battle. He will pierce his eyes through a golden cage, two wounds made one, then he dies a cruel death. Though some argue the joust wasn't a true battle and question the lion emblems, golden cage could refer to Henry's helmet and the lances split, creating two wounds made one, is quite accurate. The discoveries of Louis Pasteur. Louis Pasteur, born in 1822, is a towering figure in the world of science often referred to as the father of microbiology. His groundbreaking work fundamentally changed our understanding of germs and disease. One of his most famous contributions 
is the process of pasteurization, a technique that involves heating beverages like milk and wine to kill harmful bacteria, making them safe to consume. This method is still used worldwide, ensuring our food and drinks remain safe from dangerous microbes. Pasteur didn't stop there. He made a crucial discovery about fermentation, showing that it was caused by the growth of microorganisms rather than occurring spontaneously as previously believed. This insight was revolutionary and paved the way for future scientific advancements. His work in microbiology also led to significant developments in the field of vaccines. Pasteur developed vaccines for several deadly diseases, including rabies and anthrax. Notably, he administered the first rabies vaccination to a nine-year-old boy named Joseph Meister, who had been bitten by a rabid dog. Meister's recovery was a testament to Pasteur's groundbreaking work, and his vaccination techniques were quickly adopted by the medical community, saving countless lives. Interestingly, Nostradamus, the famed 16th century seer, seemingly mentioned Pasteur in his prophecies. The lost thing is discovered, hidden for many centuries. Pasteur will be celebrated almost as a godlike figure. This is when the moon completes her great cycle, but by other rumors, he shall be dishonored. This prophecy is particularly intriguing because in 1995, biographer Gerald L. Gaisson published The Private Science of Louis Pasteur. This book revealed that Pasteur had incorporated a rival's findings into his own research on the anthrax vaccine, a revelation that somewhat tarnished his impeccable legacy. The Great Fire of London in 1666. On September 2nd, 1666, a small fire broke out in Thomas Fariner's bakery on Pudding Lane in London. While fires were not uncommon at the time, none had ever caused as much devastation as this one. The Lord Mayor of London, Sir Thomas Bloodworth, famously dismissed the fire's potential, saying, Pish! A woman might piss it out! Unfortunately, he couldn't have been more wrong. London had experienced an unusually hot and dry summer, turning the wooden buildings into tinderboxes. The fire spread rapidly, engulfing over 300 houses within hours. Attempts to fight the fire with water-filled buckets proved futile, and panic spread throughout the city. For almost four days, the fire raged uncontrollably. King Charles II even ordered houses to be demolished to create fire breaks, but these efforts were largely ineffective. The king himself joined the firefighting efforts, passing buckets of water in a desperate attempt to douse the flames. By September 4th, half of London was ablaze. Gunpowder was used to blow up houses to create larger fire breaks, but this caused further panic as rumors spread of a French invasion. The fire was finally extinguished on September 6th, but the damage was catastrophic. Four-fifths of London, including nearly all civic buildings and 13,000 private homes, lay in ruins. The city had to be almost entirely rebuilt. Remarkably, Nostradamus had seemingly predicted this event over a century earlier. The blood of the just will be lacking in London, burnt up in the fire of 66. The ancient lady will topple from her high place. Many of the same sects will be killed. Though the human death toll from the fire was relatively low, estimated at six, some suggest that the blood of the just refers to the countless flea-carrying rats that spread the plague a year earlier. The fire, while devastating, effectively ended the plague by killing off the disease and its hosts. The French Revolution The French Revolution was a monumental event that forever changed the course of history. In 1789, fed up with the monarchy's excesses and injustices, the people of France rose up against King Louis XVI and Queen Marie Antoinette. The revolution began in earnest when Parisians stormed the Bastille prison in July, freeing political prisoners and symbolically toppling the ancien regime's power. 
By October, the revolutionaries, angered by the exorbitant price of bread, marched 12 miles from Paris to Versailles. There, they stood outside the royal residence with their guards' heads on pikes, demanding the king and queen return to Paris. King Louis XVI was eventually tried and sentenced to death for conspiring against the state. In January 1793, he was executed before a crowd of 20,000. Nine months later, Marie Antoinette faced the same fate. Her executioner held up her severed head to the cheering crowd who shouted, Vive la République! Nostradamus wrote about these events more than two centuries earlier. Songs, chants, and demands will come from the enslaved, held captive by the nobility in their prisons. At a later date, brainless idiots will take these as divine utterances. While the French people were not technically enslaved, they certainly suffered under the monarchy's rule. Many were indeed held captive by the nobility in prisons like the Bastille, although it might be harsh to call Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette brainless idiots. Their beheadings did literally render them brainless. Nostradamus's Quatrain captures the essence of the French Revolution and its dramatic impact on history.